voiceover is everywhere, and you hear it every day from radio. Number one for New Country 96.3 Hawkeye in the morning. To TV. My name is Lady Whistledown. You do not know me, but I know you. To movies. My name is Optimus Prime. Autobots, roll out. To animation. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. And so much more. Welcome to episode six. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at the world of voiceover, including movies, TV, animation, and more. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today it is my distinguished honor to be bringing you the first ever podcast interview with the leader of the X-Men, Cyclops, aka Scott Summers, from the 1992 X-Men the Animated Series, which aired on Fox Kids. But don't take my word for it. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to hear our special guest make that announcement himself. I'm super excited for you guys to join me on today's X-Men adventure. Surrender, mutant. Of course. Not energy blast, huh? Here's one from a pro. You know that temper of his. If he doesn't get his way, he's gone. We can never depend on him. With hotheads like Wolverine, maybe we never will. Where's Wolverine going? His own way, like he always does. I just hope his keen senses tell him not to take this thing on alone. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I have Norm Spencer joining me. Norm, thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. Thank you, Trenton. I'm glad to be on your show. I really appreciate your time. Uh, you know, it's always great to be able to speak with these amazing voice talents that have done shows that uh, mean a lot to me and hopefully will become something that mean a lot to my listeners if they aren't familiar with what we talk about today. But the very first thing we always like to do, Norm, is to get to know somebody when they're on our show for the first time, especially. So tell us a little bit about little Norm when you were a young boy and growing into the man. <laughs> how did you... Little Norm. Yeah. Tell us about little Norm growing into the man you became and how did you get into <laughs> acting and how did voice acting become something that you got into as well okay well i was born in uh bc british columbia vancouver i always wanted to be uh an actor and then you know i would tell teachers that uh yeah i'm gonna be an actor yeah i'm gonna be an actor you go oh really oh well you're not good looking enough to be a leading man but you're not ugly enough to, <laughs> to be <laughs> to, to not make it so it's like, okay so anyway, so I, you know, I, I was in plays in, in high school and, and stuff like that. And, uh, and then I, I thought about theater and I thought, well, you know, I didn't want to be a starving actor on the stage. So, and I loved radio. I used to listen to, you know, all the morning shows uh, in Vancouver. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll go into radio and then parlay that into but, you know, an acting career, right? Yeah. So I went to broadcast school called uh, British Columbia Institute of Technology, which means nothing probably to uh, to your listeners. Anyway, two-year course, you learn everything about radio. We had a, a radio station that we actually operated, and, and everyone had a job and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, um, I they discovered or whatever that I was a, a, a funny writer, at the end of the course, they place you in a radio station, and and they said, "Norm, you're you're going to Smithers, BC." Uh, <laughs> uh, people may know about Smithers because they've they've shot many movies up there. It's, yeah, uh, it's grown a lot since it. Uh, you know, it was a very small, but it's very known now, actually, in the yeah, film oh, yeah. industry. So tiny little town, but beautiful. And so I said, "Well," I, and I said, well, "Okay, so what am I going to be doing?" He said, "Well, you're a copywriter." I thought, I don't want to write. I want to be, a, you know, a morning guy, I'm like a, an announcer. So yeah. anyway, long story short, I drove up with this long-haired guy um, with a cockatiel, and uh, <laughs> we drove up there and, you know, worked there. And then I moved to Kelowna, and then I moved to Chilliwack. All these towns probably mean nothing to your listeners, but anyway, 
worked my way to Victoria, BC. And along the way, I just started winning all these awards for uh, my commercials, which I wrote and, and voiced myself, you see. Oh, wow. Nice. I, I didn't want to write something and then just give it to someone and let them get the credit. You know, yeah. You do it well, yeah. And to, I just had a vision of what I wanted wanted it to be. Yeah, absolutely. In 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 short, I was a tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you know. if you're a tyrant, then I am too, because I'm absolutely the same way. You know, you want to take care of your baby when you create something, and <laughs> well, you want it to come out the way you envision it. Well, that's right. So anyway, and then I got an offer from CFNY in Toronto, which is now 102.1 The Edge, and they did some really creative stuff. Man, you know, I just won more awards. I went to New York and won a couple of Clio's. And so an agency came to our table and wanted a tape from me, and I gave it to them, and they, and they took me on. So I, w- I was able to sort of quit writing commercials, which were all just club spots. You know, like, so I would say, well, what's special about your club? Oh, the lights, the, the music. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I just started doing voiceovers immediately, and um, in those days, when was that? Eighty, you know, eighty-six, eighty, whatever it was. And I was a new kid on the block, and I really did very well from the very start, and been doing it ever since. That's, so that's like, yeah, it's like twenty, I don't know, twenty-two years, twenty-three years or something. Yeah, so you've been doing it since the mid to late eighties, so nineties, so almost thirty years, almost. Is it really? Yeah. My sense of time, my sense of time is terrible. I always go, how long have you lived in that house, Norm? Oh, I don't know, about five years, <laughs> which is really 25. So anyway. Well, actually, it would be about, yeah, about 30 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, wow. That's a long time, man. And in that time, I did start acting. I did start, I uh, got an agent or on camera, and I just started doing a bunch of TV stuff. I don't know if your listeners might remember Top Cops, which... Uh, was reenactments of of actual stories and I do remember that show, yeah. Do you really? Yeah, yeah. And and you're 31. Yeah, man. I I watched all the classic stuff. My dad raised me on all kinds of stuff, and <laughs> so my diversity and my background is very different from most people. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's part of your business, right? Yeah. Well, and it's part of my business because it's part of my childhood and it's part of how I was raised and grew up, and so I share these wonderful things with people now who may not have heard of them, and hopefully they'll learn some new things too. And I mentioned Carol Burnett to people, and they go, who? Carol who? <laughs> yeah, she's she a classic. Neighbor? No, no. <laughs> I know. Who's that? Because um, <laughs> I forget. Because I'm 59, and, you know, I'm talking, like, to a 20-year-old or, or a 30-year-old, and I, you know, Don Rickles just died. They go, who? Yeah. Is that your dad? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Mr. Potato. Anyway, head. yeah, and so I did a bunch of those, and Top Cops, and... Earth Final Conflict and and ENG, all those shows, right? Yeah. Not not a huge part, but just, you know, little stuff. And uh continue to do voice and, and the money, you know, I was making so much in voice that I didn't need to concentrate I should have concentrated more on the acting because that's really, anyway, that's another Another story. <laughs> I'm rambling. Hey. I, I haven't even let you get a word in. Hey, it's okay. We're, we're getting to learn your background and your story. And that's what I love to do with my actors, Norm, is to uh, let them kind of give us a rich background on who they were and how they got where they were. You know, with getting into your career, how did the whole role of becoming Cyclops, a.k.a. Scott Summers on the X-Men, the leader of the X-Men, how did that whole role happen for you? Well, I got a call from my agent and for an audition for this show called X-Men. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say I I did not know what X-Men meant, who they were, what it was, da da da. I mean my my thing in 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 when I was a kid was Batman. I, I used to watch the series, you know, the series from yeah. 60 whatever it was. Adam I had West? A Batmobile. Yeah, Adam West. Yeah, love Bert that Ward show. Ward and the best yeah, Batman. I I did too. Loved it, <laughs> and I had a, I had my own Batmobile. Oh, sweet! Not the not the little model. It was an actual Batmobile because you know I'm filthy rich. No, no, no. It was a model. No, <laughs> it was just a tiny model that shot flames out of the back. So that's what I liked, and and that was it. I, I you know 
I'm not, uh, I was never into comic books, um, like Sidney Sheldon and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so I go to the audition and they showed me a picture of Cyclops. So I'm thinking, okay, he's blue. He shoots fire or an optic blast out of his eye. Yeah. So I just went, you know, big with him. I'm just like, look out for them. And the director's like, whoa, 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 stop. It's, it's way too big. <laughs> oh, okay. Because, you know, I'm thinking he's a superhero. He's, he's this or that. I had no concept of mutants and, and they're actually, you know, human and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I just kept, I just kept going. Well, my, one of my, you know, famous lines, Gene, get down. Right. Yeah. There were some episodes. That's all I said. But anyhow, <laughs> so I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And he goes, no, no. Uh, and thank God it was Dan Hennessy who directed most of the episodes because he was a friend of mine. And also a character. Uh, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he said, no, I'm just bring it down, bring it down. And I kept doing it, and, I, and then I was so frustrated. I said, Dan, like, I don't know what you want. And he goes, that. I want that. And I went, what do you mean, this? You want me? You know, basically, it was me, my own voice, a little bit heightened. That was it, right? And so I got the part, and, and off we went. That's awesome. Well, to be honest with you, Norm, I was not a comic book reader or um, I had no knowledge of really what Marvel was until your X-Men show came out. And really, you guys were my introduction to the world of the X-Men and you were my very first Cyclops. So I I understand that you came from a world where you didn't understand it, but your portrayal of him is what I base everything off of. And when they did the movies, I was more fond of your animation character cyclops uh scott summers than i was of some of the feature film stuff we've seen that is very very nice of you (laughs) well you shaped my childhood man i mean you shaped what scott summers is to me and what cyclops (laughs) is to me so responsibility (laughs) (laughs) you know i mean for those of us who grew up in that era man if we weren't comic book readers and like you i watched the the, uh, adam west batman show growing up and stuff but until x-men and the animated spider-man show came out that you also got to be a part of uh, in a few episodes i i had no idea what marvel was so you really were what Mm. helped shape that for me so i thank you oh wow uh that's very nice um you know, well, uh, I must say that um, until the, the whole cast sort of got together and we did we did one episode, a pilot, if you will. Yeah. And it, and it got sent to to L.A. and it was like <laughs> we all got word that okay, you're all fired. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it, you know this isn't working. There's no relationship between each character and blah blah blah, blah. And, and we're all <laughs> we're all terrified with it. What? <laughs> So the people from L.A. came up to Toronto and um, actually sat in and and kind of explained the relationship that they wanted to see between Rogue and and between, you know, me and, you know, Professor Xavier and Beast and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Well, I mean, but they were in L.A. They how would we know? We were never really given any direction as to, you know what I mean? So yeah, anyway. Sure. We did the episode again, and they were happy, and off we went. So, man, it was the time of my life. It really was. <laughs> That's no, fantastic. seriously, it was. It, yeah, uh, it was during the summer, and um, it was fantastic. Those were the days. Well, what what is it like working with those amazing people? I mean, like working with Cal Dodd and Chris Potter mm. and all the other amazing people, <laughs> like Lenore Potter. Zan. <clears throat> Lenore. I have a story, but no, I can't tell that. I can't. I can't tell that story when she and <laughs> when she and I went to a Blue Jays game. Never mind. Okay, so and we ended up on the jumbotron. The thing is, Ooh. and we and we were so because she had a. Oh God, I'm telling way too much. Uh, well, she was in a relationship, and and she. <laughs> we looked up and see ourselves in the jumbotron, and we're thinking. Shit, is this is this going across the network? <laughs> anyway, it didn't. Um, no, Cal Dodd. Oh, I play golf with Cal. Do you want me to do an impression of Cal? Sure, do it. Have you talked to him? I haven't, but I've been has, dying. Has to. he been on your show? I haven't been able to reach him yet. <laughs> okay, well, 
never mind then. Cal, Cal kind of talks like this. He's, he's kind of that sort of thing. And, and uh, talks about his golf course. Oh, Islington. Ah, uh, that third hole. Forget about it. It's, it's like, well, you'll, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't know how many episodes we did. I don't know, 63 or something. Yeah, it was like 60 something. I think I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but I just finished watching yeah. all of them and they are all excellent. <laughs> wow. Do you, you don't happen to know the actor Don Franks, do you? Oh gosh, that name Heard sounds super familiar. Why, why does yeah. it sound familiar? Well, he's just, he's a fantastic musician, a great actor. He was, uh, he looks like a biker. He's, he always wears a bandana and, and he wears bare feet when he works, when he does, uh, so you remember the episode where my dad and I were, had a yeah uh, yeah okay and he's got a he's got a voice that goes down like this yeah he was the pirate like the space pirate yes well God rest his soul he uh, he passed away unfortunately um, I think in the past year but oh no that was that was really really nice because you know what you know we don't work together yeah we did in the beginning. You know, people's schedules, they don't work out. And, and so you're kind of, a lot of the time you're in there by yourself. Yeah. But him and I did our thing and and he came up after and he said, uh, man, that was one of the best experiences of my life. <laughs> <laughs> he was on, he was on that series, uh, gangland undercover about the motorcycle gang. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, he had an excellent voice too. Like you guys paired really well as father and son vocally. Um, so yeah, he was an amazing casting for that role. And it's sad to hear that he's passed, but he, he definitely left oh, a, no. a lasting impression on us. So, And, and a, just an incredibly nice guy. That's awesome. Well, and I, I checked real quick, Norman, y'all did 76 episodes. Oh, all together? <laughs> uh, all together. The entire series was 76 episodes in total. Was it three years, I think, or two, uh, two? Roughly, I think it over the course of two or three years it aired. I think it was from 93 to right at 95, where it finished right before 95, but it was like through that era. So Okay. And it's still going. And, you know, I still get uh, letters from kids all over uh, the States, and, and it just uh, it floors me. Well, they and, have... You know, I, sorry, go ahead, man. <laughs> no, no, you, you and I were talking earlier, and... and they send a picture of Cyclops and they want an autograph. And I'm like, I don't know what, do I sign my name? Do I sign Cyclops? I'm not sure. <laughs> Cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not used to, <laughs> Yeah. you know, I make a living at it, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not George Clooney for God's sake. <laughs> I wish I was. I mean, I look like him, but I just don't have the, <laughs> I just don't have his agent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I have gray hair. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, you got to voice Cyclops on several different projects. Um, and I know, you know, working on so many different things in your career, it's hard to keep things straight. But I just wanted to mention these so people know uh, you voiced uh, Cyclops and Scott Summers because they're one and the same on X-Men mm -hmm. US uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter, uh, a video game. Oh, did I? Yeah. And then you did it on X-Men Children of the Atom. And then two other games, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, New Age of Heroes, and then Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. So you actually got to be not only on the series, but in a lot of video games too. So if people hadn't originally heard you on the show, they may have heard you first on the video games. And I just wanted to mention those as well, uh, because your voice was pretty readily out there as Cyclops for a long time. I should really get in touch with my agent, because I don't think I've got received a penny from any of that so <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding no i'm not it's uh <laughs> anyway we, we don't want to talk about money but uh well yeah thank you for uh remembering all that stuff i i have no idea you know because they can use it for whatever they want yeah for, you know a bio for they say years. here just read this and then you don't have a clue what it's used for <laughs> yeah it's not like seinfeld where None of them have to, have to work ever, ever again. Yeah. Because the uh, resids and, and royalties and all that stuff. But that's, you know what? I'm not complaining. It, it, that, that's just the way it is. Absolutely. Uh, being in Canada, and I guess maybe this, it's a little different with SAG. I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, we're just really, really lucky to work. And I, and, and I feel really blessed to, to have been part of that show for sure. 
Well, aside from getting to play Cyclops, you also got to play on a show that was more geared towards young kids, maybe kind of into the uh, preteen age range for Rescue Heroes when mm -hmm. you played Billy Blazes. Uh, and what was yeah. that show like, getting to work with those amazing cast members? I did some other cartoons before this, but or before um, Rescue Heroes, but, but we'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, that was... Um, that was that was fun as well. Billy Blazes and and they came. They had all these weird names for um, the guy. Uh, well, you might remember Cliff Cliffhanger. No, no, Cliff. Yeah, uh, I think it was Cliffhanger. I think. Yeah, was it Cliffhanger? Something like that. They kind of had names that were kind of like a play on what their well, specialty well, was. What they did. Yeah. Yeah. So Billy Blazes. It was kind of. I'm not going to say similar to Cyclops, only in the sense that he was the leader. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he was the leader. But again, it was I didn't have to put on, you know, sort of a character voice or a cartoon voice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And it was just just a little bit heightened. And I'm not sure how many episodes we did of that. But then they came out with uh, action figures, which were really cool. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I went to Canadian Tire one time and, and saw one, and I pushed the button, and God, there I was. <laughs> You're talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. No, and I if, love that. And of course, as the name stipulates, Billy Blazes was the firefighter on the team and uh, the leader the of all, firefighter. Of, the, all yes. of the safety professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I, loved, uh, I loved our feet. Yeah. Our feet, our feet were like they were huge. En encyclopedias. <laughs> And I, you know, these action figures and and the cells that we got, I gave them away to to kids in the neighborhood. I mean, I just and people go, "Why did you do that?" Why, you know, t-shirts and I said, oh, "I don't know, they're for kids, man. They're not. What am I going to do with them, right?" <laughs> well, if you ever go to conventions or something, then you have stuff to kind of put around you, and people go, "Oh, hey, you know." Yeah, I suppose. I'm just not used to the whole. Um, celebrity thing that, that surrounds it you know yeah yeah I it was really just about about the work and and how much fun we had and how lucky we were to uh to do that to be a part of that yeah i mean because you were a huge part of the legacy of marvel um you know those fox kids shows that came out really were the starting point for a lot of people uh whether they were comic book readers or not it really was the first time i think uh, I mean, they the the characters had been used other times. Don't get me wrong, but I think the series that came out in the '90s really changed the whole format of what people expected and came to know and love from the Marvel universe. Hmm. Yeah, and the audience is very, you know, very very uh, savvy and very smart people. Absolutely. You know, so the writing the writing was really good. The writing had to be well accurate because. You know, a lot of the audience, they were way ahead of them. So yeah. if you weren't, seriously, it was like, you know, well, that's not right. No, he didn't do that. You know, you know all that stuff. So. All the comic book readers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely understand that. You know, because if you already mm -hmm. love something because you've had a perspective of it before, are you living up to what I'm already used to kind of a thing? So Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you have any cool stories from behind the scenes working with the cast members when y'all did work together? That I can say on the air? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh <laughs> well, I do have one actually. Um, the uh, I think his name was Dave, uh, the engineer, great guy. You know, that ran the board, right? Yeah. And that's that's a job. You you I mean, you can understand. He's he's got. If there's six actors in the room, you know, he's got to let you know do, do the levels and this and that. And know when to turn the level down on one guy, and then to, anyway. Yeah. So, so we're sitting outside um, after an episode, and he says to me, um, "Norm, I have, I have a son who's, he's, I think it was like four or five. Yeah. And he's he's got a cold. He's not feeling well. Would you mind calling him as Cyclops and just say, you know, I I hear you're you're not feeling well." This is Cyclops, by the way. Um, you're not feeling well. I just want you to know that uh, I'm behind you. 
um, and I hope you get better soon, right? Yeah. Like that. And, you know, a couple of days later, I said to Dave, how did uh, your son like the, the message? And he says, oh, he was thrilled. <laughs> and again, I'm like, wow. I, you know, like I, just, I don't realize the how important and how um, personal it is for, for, for so many people. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm sure that meant a lot to him. Oh, it meant, yeah. And uh, he got better, like, immediately. So I, <laughs> I don't know. I, it was all you. I, it was all did you. Cyclo- did Cyclops have some sort of medical degree? No. Laughter and smiles are the best medicine. It could have truly healed him. <laughs> well, you know, I just don't, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't get it at that time. And I, and I, you know, probably if I did get it at that time, I'd probably get a swelled head and, and walk around, you know, as Cyclops all the time. So <laughs> it's probably best that I, that I, uh, didn't. Do you know who <laughs> I am? <laughs> yeah. Don't you recognize me? I'm Cyclops. Sure, sure? guy. Sure. <laughs> No, you're not Cyclops. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> we well, only know Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, right. You're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I was the leader. That was Cal Dodd, Wolverine. Perfect. Yeah. Cal Dodd was... I mean, you guys made just such a great team together. The way your voices interacted and just the personalities that you guys brought to the show. Um, it was just... You know, y'all had those moments of agitation, you and Wolverine, but then there was those bonding times where y'all teamed up because it was just that dire of a situation. And whenever y'all weren't fighting over Gene, of course, (laughs) you know. Yeah, Gene. And um, George Buda, who played the Beast, who played Beast. I mean, he was, you know, he's like, he's huge. He looks like a biker, George Buda. (laughs) Have you had him on your... On your show? I haven't. You're actually my first, well, my second X-Men. I've had Morph, but, okay. you know, but uh, no, I mean, I would love to eventually speak with all of them, of course. So, But um, Cal Dodd, you know, the greatest guy, really terrible golfer, but, uh, <laughs> but he uh Are you saying that just because he beats uh, you all the time? <laughs> no, no. In fact, he's a nice guy. He invites me to his course, his private course. So oh, wow. He's just, he's the funniest, nicest guy That's awesome. in the world. Yeah. Well, Norm, I have a quick question for you. You know, there are a lot of fans like me who gravitated toward your character, Cyclops, Scott Summers on X-Men. And as the leader, you know, maybe some kid like me growing up, you know, really loved the show and really, uh, you know, just latched onto your voice and who you are. What kind of advice would you give to them or just anyone who's interested in potentially pursuing an acting career or maybe a voice acting career? Well, I get asked this quite often. Um, not specifically for animation, but, um, you know, just like commercials and, and, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Because they, you know, uh, they've been told they have a great voice and a lot of them do. Here's the thing. You can have a great voice, whatever it may be, you know, straight voice, or if you can do a bunch of characters and impressions, which are really not wanted anymore. Like I used to do, you know, I used to do Johnny Carson. I'd say, over there, Ed, Ed, where, where is, um, where, where is that? I, um, oh, Ed's dead. Sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Or Jack Nicholson. I used to do that a lot too. Uh, and Ronnie Dangerfield. I tell you, I get no respect at all. You know, I get no respect at all. You know, not much call for that. So what I tell people is people may have great voices, but they, they can't read yeah if that if that makes any sense yeah absolutely for some reason i've just always had the ability since grade school to be able to to read from a book and make it sound like i'm not reading it does that make any sense oh yeah totally because i do that all the time myself yeah yeah and i don't know why i had that skill and i also really enjoyed it I guess I was, you know, I was a class clown um, in school and I was in the principal's office more than the principal, but um, (laughs) I managed to graduate anyway. So, yeah, it's very difficult unless, um, well, here's the thing. Back when I was doing it, um, you go to school, you go to whatever um, broadcast school they have in, in whatever 
city you, you, you live in and start there. You see, people today, they just want to start immediately, you know, do a morning show in, in you know what I mean? And Yeah, they want to be famous instantly. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and maybe maybe they can these days. I'm not sure. It's a different world today. But back then, when I went to broadcast school, I learned about news. I learned about how to do sports. I learned how to be a DJ, and I learned how to write commercials and and all that stuff. So you learned a lot of skills. Well, yeah, it's like Ted Baxter was like, I started in a five thousand watt radio station, and you know. <laughs> If anyone remembers Ted Baxter. And that's really what it was. And then I worked my way slowly to bigger stations and bigger stations. And uh, But that's that was my journey. Um, and I, I tell people, I say, because there's courses everywhere. I say, if you want to do it, take this course and take that course. You'll, you'll end up with a, a nice demo. And, and then you shop it around. And they, the agents say, nope. It's extremely competitive, as you just like being an actor, you know. Yeah, definitely. it is. Vo- it, it is voice acting. It's just voice acting. It's not. I don't think. I don't think people should diminish voice acting from from acting. Because acting comes first, and you're an actor before anything. So. Exactly. So that was my point. When you may have a good voice, or you you know whatever, but you're not. You don't want to be Walter Cronkite. You don't want to be like, what do you want to do? Like, what do yeah. you, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the way it is. You know, like, it's like, <laughs> what was your question? Sorry. No, it was just kind of what advice My you advice have. To people. But you said what people really, you know, like people say, I have a great voice, but it's, can you act? Do you have the acting abilities that you need? Or are you able to read exactly. copy without stumbling over the words? And can you make them sound like your own words and not like you're reading off a piece of paper? <laughs> so my, yeah, when, when I said, um, make it sound like you're not reading and this doesn't have to be, uh, playing a character in a, in a animation, you could be doing a commercial for McDonald's and it's very straight copy, and, and you're, you, you're selling egg McMuffins that are av- apparently available 24-7. Like, <laughs> well, they are. No, but I mean, I don't know. You have to, you can't sound like Walter Cronkite, just, you know, you can get an egg McMuffin. Blah, blah, blah. No. And what they really want now is don't sound like an announcer. Yeah. They want more natural sounding voices, I think, now. <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, and that, that was different than when I started back, you know, there was no, don't sound like, what do you mean? Well, they don't want it to sound like too professional and too kind of like the guy next door. Yeah. You know, you can get an egg muffin for like three, three forty nine, almost throw it away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, like throw it away. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just kind of like, let it come easy. Let it go. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's really hard to convey that to someone who wants to do it because they hear things on the radio and, and I hear them read something and I'm like, Oh (laughs) yeah. Like it's stiff. It's stiff. And the, the tonality of their voice is good. They're, you know, they have a very smooth, um, mellow sound in their voice, but can you act? And that's what people miss. Because you are acting, but you're only acting with your voice. Yeah. As opposed to your facial expressions. That's all. But, but you do make facial expressions when you're doing voice. And you use your hands and you move and, you know, to convey what you're doing. It all helps get it out there the right way. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, if there's, you know, people that really want to do it, um, it's possible. It really is. But get some training, like go to a, take a course, a really good course. And then of course, then you have to join the union and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for giving us your advice on what people should do to, you know, kind of reach their potential goals or their uh, aspirations, Um, kind of give people an idea of what it would take to do that, if that's something they do want to pursue or not. But, you know, I have one final question for you today, Norm, and we will wrap this interview up. The question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Don't do what I did. No. <laughs> uh, 
the legacy I want to leave behind. Yes, sir. Well, okay. I was lucky enough to find a career that I absolutely am passionate about. I love to go to work. I love to work. And I hope that, uh, and I'm, I think I'm pretty sure that I did not step on maybe one or two toes along the way in 20, 22 years or whatever. And I'd like to think that people enjoy working with me and can I enjoy working with them? And it's a, it is an absolute privilege to still be in this business, you know, at 59, because unfortunately there, you know, there's a lot of friends of mine from the old days that uh, you just don't hear them anymore. And, and for, for whatever reason. So I'm, I consider myself extremely lucky and I'm grateful you know, to be able to do the job that I love. Cause a lot of people can't say that, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I, know I understand. You love your, I love you. You love your job. And yeah, that's a very, very fortunate thing to be able to, uh, to say. Oh, absolutely. And, and I hope it carries on, you know, I mean, there's people that, uh, work to live and I live to work. I know that's a cliche, but, just, I'm just very, I'm very, very lucky. Absolutely. I, I would totally agree with you on that. You're very, very lucky man. And it's been a very big privilege to speak with you today. Oh, thank you, Trenton. It's been a, it's been an honor and a pl- privilege for me. This is my first uh, podcast. So. Wow. I am honored for uh, sure. <laughs> how's my hair? How's my hair? It looks oh, no, fantastic. Do you remember Pigsburg Pigs by any chance? That name sounds extremely familiar. It's a show, isn't it? It was a yeah animated uh, series. It only lasted, uh, I think, one or two seasons. I think I do I recall was, it, yeah. It was only 26 episodes, I think. There were two wolves, and I played one of the wolves, and I did sort of uh, Reverend Jim from Taxi. Okay, yeah. I was playing one of the wolves. And I would say, hey, you nincom wolf. I said, no, where we're going. We're going to catch the pigs. <laughs> I love it. Well, Norm, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today. Would you please give us a closeout today as Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops from X-Men? Our mission's complete. Everyone into the Blackbird. And Gene, this may be the last time I tell you, but get down. Hey everyone, I know you thought the episode was over, but I have just a little bit more for you today. There was some behind the scenes talk where Norm and I discussed kind of how the 1992 X-Men really kind of shaped and molded uh, society's opinion and thoughts on X-Men as a whole. So this is just a little clip. I know we kind of talked about it some in the episode, but this was just really fun and I thought I'd share it with you guys today. I hope you enjoy. Well, Norm, it has been absolutely fun, man. It's been fun for me too. Thanks, buddy. Hey, you are super I hope welcome. You mean it. <laughs> I do, man. I really do. I mean, yeah. seriously, man, like listening to you guys on X Men and your character was always so I mean, he was just you portray a really great leader. And, you know, I love the confrontation between you and Cal when y'all were Wolverine and Cyclops, and it's just like, man, just such good memories. You guys really created a uh not just a great show, but just I mean, there were good moral lessons and good, um, just, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's just, it's hard to explain the shows back Mm. then were just uncomparable. Any, uh, you know, that X-Men series I've watched, I think every one they've ever made and every show tries to emulate your show because you guys set the bar so high that everyone else tries to mimic it. Even Hugh Jackman tried to be Mm. Cal Dodd. Because the animation, <laughs> seriously, they actually used his audio for Hugh Jackman because the, your show became so iconic. Everyone based everything off of the 94, 92, 93 series for X-Men. Uh, you guys really changed the world of Marvel. Wow. Now now that you mention it, uh, when I do listen to Hugh Jackman, uh, yeah, I do, I do get, uh, I think of Cal because, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, Cal doesn't have... 
six pack that uh, Hugh has, <laughs> and all that sort of thing. But uh, no, that that's cool. Our mission's complete. Everyone into the Blackbirds. And Gene, nice shoes. Hey, everyone, and thanks so much for listening to today's episode of Who Did That Voice? If you enjoyed today's episode, please check us out online on all social media platforms at Who Did That Voice and on YouTube at Who Did That Voice 24. Also, remember to check out our website, whodidthatvoice.org. Again, that's www.whodidthatvoice.org. Thank you to all my listeners out there. I just wanted to say, if you want to partner with Who Did That Voice, just telling your friends and family about us is the best way to share the show with others. And or leaving us a review on Apple Podcast or wherever you get your podcast from. The third and final way is by joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Who Did That Voice. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.